Hi everybody, welcome back to my Dungeon Boss campaign series. We are on the latter half of chapter 15. We have dungeons 5, 6, and 7, culminating with the Fire Lord Temple. So we're going to start out with Marauder Arena, which at this point we have updated to level 39 requirements, so we are now playing this at level. And uh, we are also seeing a bunch of champions in this dungeon here too. So we got uh, um, an elite level here and a bunch of bronze level ones. So these guys are, are going to be no joke. So fortunately for us, um, for the most part, our power team should be able to handle it uh, just fine. We're going to keep Grognog in there because uh, even against uh, green, Grognog still has two attacks. Two weak attacks by Grognog still might be better than uh, a single attack by someone else. Plus, uh, on non-nature heroes, he's going to do just fine. So uh, we'll keep uh, the same team we got, and we'll keep the same potion loadout as well. I'm not expecting to die, um, but if we do catch a, a stray attack somewhere, um, we can always uh, swap somebody out and bring in William if we need to. Um, my main concern will be when we do the final boss, he's likely going to kill somebody. I might actually have to level up a hero just to be able to, uh, to beat him. So these guys are fairly tough. Nice thing is they're tanks, uh, so they shouldn't put out a ton of damage. Unless they have Beast Hunter like William does and they decide they want to attack Grognog. I would be a little bit disappointed in that. Yeah, but they, they burned. Another round of Elites. Better do our AoE. Whittle them down a couple of pegs here. Or whittle them down almost all the pegs. And I'm guessing Grognog's going to be up for AoE on the next room. We'll just cycle through them all one by one by one and we just roll right through to the end. Uh, undead, that's kind of Kira's specialty. It kind of seems pointless to waste a nice AoE attack there. I was actually hoping Grognog would double tap that guy just so that I could kill the other one with Nub Nub, but it uh, looks like it all worked out uh, in the long run. All right, so we have AoE on Grognog, so that's good. That's already going to buy us uh, um, some turns here. And so we have Elemental Disadvantage, so really we're looking at uh, ultimately just... Uh, slowing him down. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but slowing him down will allow us to heal with Nub Nub. Uh, before he gets his attacks in. So if, if we are uh, dealing with uh, a little bit of damage being taken, uh, we at least have uh, that advantage. So um, we'll see if he buffs himself, and then Koros can purge it next turn. I don't need to heal. We're all good there. Armor Break. That is always... Those are the kickers. Armor Break is, is no joke. Um, so the thing is... Nub Nub is not going to be able to heal him to capacity. It's just not going to happen. So what I'm wondering is if I use my potion on him, if he does another one of those attacks, it's still going to kill him. And then I have to use my revive. So if he's going to kill Grognog anyways, it makes sense to just leave the potion off and uh, just let him die. I mean, yes, this will fill him up uh, pretty much completely, but, uh, you know, kind of wonder... He's got lower. He's got lower defense. He might die in one hit, regardless. So, I'll uh, I'll save the potion. If he targets him again, so be it. I'll just res him. So rather than using two potions, I'll just use one. But I'm hoping he burns. He does. And I'll heal on. You know what? I'll throw a heal out there just because I'm not using the potion. That way, I get some pre heals on everybody else, just in case he. Uh, hit somebody else. Uh, I at least have that uh, in the chamber. See, he went after Koros. He could have easily killed Grognog, and now Grognog's going to be back to full force. So it was wise not to use the potion. So sometimes you just have to play uh, Russian roulette there, weigh the pros and cons. And we'll get a little bit of Fortify here. That probably saved Kira's life, and now he's dead. I probably should have used AoE there, but he's still dead, no matter what. So, not overly bad. Um, I don't think he was a tank. He's a beast warrior, so... Um, William wasn't gonna... I mean, William would have did extra damage to beast, but elemental disadvantage again. 
Um, Nimriel would have been okay if you have a high-powered caster like uh, Nitpick. It might have uh, dipped quite a bit, but uh, um, honestly, I think the team we had was, was decent, so I'm not uh, going to complain about that. All right, moving forward. Smoldering Trail. Purple and green, nothing to worry about there. Um, we'll keep the same team. Koros for the greens, and uh, Kira and Grognod for everything else. And it's a short dungeon too, so we will just uh, kill them one at a time. And I should kill him. I'm trying to think of the best place to go here. I'd like to usually collect those guys, but... Uh, well, he already attacks, so I guess I don't have to kill him. Get him the next turn. Hate to leave Evos unclaimed, especially when, uh, when you're on a new account like this. You need every single Evo you can get. I know with my main account, I have hundreds upon thousands of Evos that I'll never use, and that we can never sell, and we can never cash in for anything other than more Evos. Um, so someday, the Evo Chamber will maybe be worth something, but uh, until that day, unfortunately, um, for those of us who are maxing out on Evos, it's just unfortunately a waste. Um, I don't know how hard these guys are going to hit. I don't really like the idea that they're going to be getting a turn, so I'm just going to kill them. We'll let the energy chips fall as they may, um, but... I didn't want two of them doing damage to me. Not right before a boss room. Um, best to go into the boss room, you know, well prepared. Not uh, worrying about how you're going to heal on the first turn when Nub Nub's a slow healer. So it's the same with the taunting. You don't like to have to wait until the slow round to take care of these things. Um, all right. So do we double tap him first, or do we vibrating palm? Well, let's do the double tap first. See how tough he is. He should be armored. Pretty sure he's armored. No crit for him. And then Koros will attack him. And then I don't need to heal. I don't even really need to pre-heal. We'll see what he does for attack first. And yeah, moderate amount of damage. Nothing serious. All right, so he doesn't seem at all dangerous. Um, I feel like uh, he probably auto run it to completion here. He's probably got an attack waiting, but uh, um, most people at this point should have a strong enough team where you get a couple of guys with multiple ascensions. You can just pound him down. Yeah, let's just auto this one. I'm not afraid of this one anymore. Yeah, even his powerful attack just wasn't enough, so... Nothing too serious. This is, of, of course, all gearing up towards the Fire Lord Temple. So that is ultimately what this chapter is about. So Fire Lord Temple, I don't remember what the guy's name is, but he is the real deal, this dude here, Kasai. He has the Searing Chop, and he has uh, the Triple Slam as well. So fortunately for us, um, we have Grognog, which is going to do well against everybody here. Um, and we also have Koro. So elementally, we're sitting pretty good. Um, what I don't think we want, though, is we probably don't want Kira. We probably want to have elemental advantage with Tank, um, with William, because I feel like we're going to need that. Um, and then also we're going to take Yasmin along, too. Just bringing Nub Nub in there is just, it seems like a bad idea. So... The only thing that I don't recall off the top of my head is if those guys are immune to fire, in which case we'd be better off with Coro or uh, Cobalt instead of Koros. Um, but uh, I feel like Koros is stronger in general. So we're going to bring in... Order is going to be... You know what? I'm going to actually have Grognog back clean up because I know if I do an attack with Grognog and it just almost kills somebody... Um, William or Yasmin's going to drop the ball and they're not actually going to kill the person. So I'm actually going to send him in um, like last. And who's actually going to be my fourth? I hadn't even, oh, I was going to bring Koros. So, all right, order's going to be Koros, then William, 
then Yasmin, then Grognon. That should do it. Normally, I would like the healer to go last, but um, like I said, with the way the dungeon's going to go, I want to be able to determine if I need to whip out a potion and an AoE attack from Grognog rather than leading off with that and then find out that somebody else can't finish the, the, uh, the job. Um, so we're going to play this one safe right from the start and just uh, kind of test the waters, see how strong guys are. If these guys are going to be able to kill William when he's taunting and such, I need to know what I'm up against because I know that the end guy... He's uh, he's no slouch. So, and it's not that he's he's tough like he's a tough warrior type guy. He's tough because he has the Savage Fury trait, and Savage Fury basically means um, if you can't kill him quick, he's gonna dominate you. That's basically what's gonna happen because um, you leave him with just a sliver of health and he does three times damage. I don't care who your tank is, he's going to kill it, and that's why he's so hard in challenge mode too because. You just can't you can't eat the damage so if it comes to that what I will end up doing is first off I gotta I would have to check the ascension requirements but I would want to bring in Augustus because he has his Aegis wall um, so the downside to the to the guy is he he never really lets on when he's gonna do his triple attack it's not like when you're fighting the lich and he gives you clear indication that he's gonna do an AoE attack or a massive attack um, so this is why I put Grognog last. I wanted to see how that goes, and it didn't go as well as I thought. So I used Grognog to basically clean up this mess so I don't take a ton of damage. But yeah, with uh, with Augustus doing his Aegis Wall, it doesn't matter who he hits because everybody's going to be shielded. Where with Yasmin, I can shield one person, um, but actually I don't even have I don't even have her fully ascended, so I can't heal anybody to be honest or um, shield somebody. Um, I don't really want to use either of these yet because I feel like this is, yeah, this has a long cooldown. This one isn't as bad. But what I feel like I'm going to do is just wait it out a little bit and try to avoid using those so I can use those mid-boss fight rather than uh, having them on cooldown entering the boss fight. Because I feel like the first few hits I'll be able to soak from the boss. It's just once he gets his Savage Fury going, that's when I need to really make sure that he's not attacking my weaker heroes. That's when William's got to come alive. And uh, if we can't beat him, then uh, that's when we got this little button down here. So we'll see how it goes ultimately before we resort to that. Um, I don't think I even have any high level people like level 70s yet on here. Um, so anybody that wants to friend me, I'm definitely open to it. I think I'm at capacity for the most part, but uh, I could always use some uh, some high-level friends here. So um, the other big thing with the challenge mode is the fact that there's three guys in here. That's never that good. So Burning Touch. So he doesn't have Savage Fury on normal campaigns, so that's actually good for us. So he may actually be just uh, another pushover, to be honest. But yeah, challenge mode, he's uh, he's the real McCoy. So I think we're fine with Guardian Strike to start with. Should be decent enough. I wanted to, I didn't want all three of them attacking William. Because if they all do some sort of a searing hack and then a triple slam or something, uh, it may still have killed William. I just, I didn't need that, so... Now that we can do some AoEs, knock those guys down. Didn't kill them, um, probably because they have high fire resistance, but we'll go like this here and save them a little bit. And then we'll heal Grognog just for the sake of doing so. I don't want him burning up too much. Let the guy on fire burn. This guy is nothing. You can see he's got pretty decent defense there. He's holding up even against uh, water heroes. Um, but yeah, once that Savage Fury kicks in, that's that's when things get uh, south. Fortunately, this is f deep enough in the chapters where by Chapter 15 Challenge Mode, I should be, I'm hoping at that point, level 60 or so. I should be able to beat it, and hopefully I got uh, decent heroes at that point too. Um, or at least uh, Augustus Ascended. 
But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And honestly, this this is a win no matter what. This, he was not nearly as threatening as I gave him credit for, but um, that just shows you the difference between normal and challenge mode. Is uh, one little trait and a couple of stars it makes the world a difference. But that was really uh, nothing to worry about. So that is going to wrap up Chapter 15. Chapter 15 All-Star, that's always nice. Nothing overly difficult. The next level should be level 40. We're going to be at level 40 uh, very, very soon, so I don't see a problem with that. Level 40, so it's going to be 40 and 41. Not a problem there. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up this uh, video here. We'll catch you next time for Chapter 16. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please show your continued support by hitting that like button. And be sure to check out both my YouTube channels for new content all the time. And always remember, peace is a lie, there's only passion. We'll see you next time.